In this tutorial, I will show you how to program three modes for square LED switches with Arduino. We are going to see how to customize them, how to make them compatible with a breadboard, a complete diagram for wiring the switches, and a walkthrough of the code to make them useful. Let's get started. This is the square switch I will use. They are rated 12 volt, but they work just fine on 5 volt as well. I customized them with some Urbesh characters. They are a little tricky to take apart. Take your time and don't use pliers because you could break the plastic casing. I bought a pack of 12 switches on Amazon that comes in four colors. The link to the product is in the video description. You cannot use the switch directly on a breadboard because they have large poles. To make them compatible, I use simple Dupont wires. These are made for a breadboard and you can insert them easily. So first I cut this end of the Dupont wire. And using a wire stripper, I strip the end of the wire. Now it's ready to be soldered on a pole of the switch. Here I have a switch with five wires soldered on each pole. So now I can use it on a breadboard and use it with Arduino code. Let's look at the wiring for the first mode, which is the normally closed mode. In this mode, the contacts in the switch are closed by default. This is why the LED on the switch is on. We turn it off by pressing the button on the switch. Since it is a momentary switch, the LED is turned off when the button is fully depressed and turned back on again when we release it. Here is our switch with the five poles. And here is the pinout. You can see that the three centered poles are close to the positive pole. It will help you identify the right pole when wiring it. We are going to read the switch with an Arduino Uno. And we use a breadboard for the connections. The switch is going to turn on a LED. First, we connect the 5V pin on the Arduino to the positive rails on the breadboard. We connect the ground pin to the ground rails on the breadboard. Next, we connect the negative terminal of the LED to the ground rail. The negative terminal on the LED is always the shortest one. We connect the positive terminal of the LED to a row and we add a 220 ohm resistor on the same row. It will limit the current going to the LED to avoid burning it. The other side of the resistor is connected to pin 10 on the Arduino. Now it's time to connect the switch. First, the ground pole is connected to the ground rail. The common pole is connected to the positive rail. The positive pole is connected to a row on the breadboard. The normally closed pole is connected also on the same row. And finally, we connect the row to pin 2 on the Arduino. Now let's look at the wiring for the second mode, which is the normally open mode. In this mode, the contacts in the switch are open by default. This is why the LED on the switch is off. We turn it on by pressing the button on the switch. The LED is turned on when the button is fully depressed and turn back off again when we release it. The wiring for normally closed mode is exactly the same as before, with the exception that we connect the normally open pole this time, which is in pink on the diagram. You can pause the video to take your time looking at the wiring. For the third mode, we are going to use the normally closed pole of the switch, but this time we will control the LED on the switch so that when we press the button, the LED on the switch is blinking. We use the same wiring as the normally closed mode with two exceptions. 
The normally closed pole is connected to pin 6 on the Arduino. We are going to use pin 6 to turn the LED in the switch on and off. And the common pole is connected to the same row as the positive pole. You can pause the video to take your time looking at the wiring. Now it's time to look at the Arduino code. I am using Visual Studio code for my programming project. But the code I'm going to show you works just fine and without any modification in the Arduino IDE that everyone knows. And if you are interested in using Visual Studio code, see my video on setting it up. The link is in the video description. Now before going into the details of the code, Let's look at the main loop where everything is happening. There's three sections in the main loop. The first section is for reading the red switch. The second section is for reading the green switch. And the last one is for reading the orange switch. So we are reading three switches every time in the main loop. Now, if we're looking at the first sections, if the red switch is pressed, we're going to output on the serial port red switch on. And we are going to invert the LED at the top of the red switch. So invert LED mean, means if the LED is off, it will be turned on. And if it's on, it will be turned off. So if we look here, and if I press the red switch, the LED at the top is turned on. And if I press it again, the LED at the top is turned off and we see the output on the serial monitor. Now the second section that is reading the green switch, the principle is the same. So if the green switch is pressed, we're going to output on the serial port green switch on. And we're going to invert the state of the LED at the top of the green switch. So if we press it, the LED at the top is turned on, press it again, turn off, and we see also the output on the serial monitor. And the last one is for reading the orange switch. So if the orange switch is pressed, we're going also to output on the serial port the orange switch on. We are going to invert the state of the LED at the top. And now next, we are making the LED inside the switch blinked for five seconds at a 100 millisecond interval. So if we try it, we press the orange switch. The LED at the top is turned on and the LED inside the switch is blinking for five seconds. And if we press it again, LED at the top is turned off and the LED inside the switch is blinking. Now let me close the light and that we see the, uh, the LED better. So the red switch is in a normally closed mode, meaning that the contacts inside the switch are closed. So the switch is on by default, and this is why the LED inside the switch is turned on. This one is using the normally open mode, meaning that the contacts inside the switch are open. So the switch is off. This is why the LED inside the switch is turned off. So if I press it, you will see that the light inside is turned on briefly like this. And this one is, is, uh, is the inverse of the other one. So if I press it, the LED inside the switch is turned off briefly like this. And the last one is using also the normally closed mode. So the switch is on by default. Now we can play with the parameters of the blinked function. For example, we can make the LED inside the switch blink, for example, for 10 seconds. 
and let's change the interval for 300 milliseconds, meaning the blinking will be slower. So I will upload the code and we will see the difference. It's uploaded, so if I try it, you see that the blinking is much slower and it's blinking for 10 seconds. Now let's take a closer look at the code and start with the LEDs. So here I'm defining my LEDs. I have three LEDs, this one. And the first one, this one is connected to pin nine, the second to pin 10, and the third one is connected to pin 11 on the Arduino. And here I, has, I, I have a simple variable to define the number of LEDs that I have. So by putting the LEDs in an array, it's much more easier to initialize them. So if we go to the init LED function, I'm using a simple for loop to define the pin mode of each LED in the array as an output. So it's as simple as that. Instead of writing three pin mode call, I'm using a for loop. So imagine I have uh, 10 LEDs in the array I I will I will use the exact same loop, the exact same code for the 10 LEDs. So it's it's much simpler. So if we look at the invert LED function, the invert LED function is very simple. So again, if the LED is off, it will be turned on, and if the LED is on, it will be turned off. So the first thing we we do in the function is to read the current state of the LED that is passed as a parameter to the function. So we're using the digital read function in Arduino. And if the LED is in a state of I, meaning it is turned on, we're going to use the digital write function to the LED to write a low value to the, to the LED, which means that we're turning the LED off. And else, meaning the LED is actually right, is actually turned off. We're going to use again the digital write function and write to the LED the value of i, meaning will be turned on. It's a very simple function that we're reusing in the blink LED function. So the blink LED function has three parameters. The LED that we want to blink, the duration in millisecond of the blinking, and the speed of the blinking. So I'm using duration functions and I'm going to show to you uh, the detail of this function later. So the principle is we init a timer with the duration that is passed uh, as a parameter to the blink LED function. And we, we're using a while loop and we're calling the duration function. And while the, the duration, the time is not expired, we are inverting the state of the LED. We're waiting for the speed passed as a parameter before inverting it again. And at the end of the duration, we're simply turning off the LED at the end of the, blink the blinking. The duration functions are two functions. Both of them are using the MIDI's function of Arduino. The first one is the init timer function, where we keep track of the current time and the duration that was passed as a parameter. And the second one is a duration, is the actual duration function, where we compare the current time with the time at the start of the initialization 
and we compare it with the duration and if the duration has been reached the function returns true and we're using the structure defined at the start of the of the file to store the time at the start of the initialization and the duration in milliseconds let's look at the definition of the switches and the function so here I define the two mode that we are using in the switches, the normally closed mode and the normally open mode. And I define them so that I have just one function to read all the three switches. So like the red is using the normally closed mode, the orange the normally closed mode and the green is using the normally open mode. So I can read all of them just with one function. Here I define the green switch as connected to pin 3 on the Arduino. The red switch is connected to pin 2 on the Arduino. And the orange switch is connected to pin 4 on the Arduino. This is where we are receiving the values when the switch is actually pressed by the user. And here is the definition of the LED inside the orange switch and it's connected to pin 6 on the Arduino. Here I have a variable where we keep track of the last time we read a switch. And it's important, since the switch is a mechanical device, the contact inside the switch is not perfect and we receive a lot of values indicating that the switch has been pressed, even though it appears the user pressed it just once. And if we look at the function, so we just have one function for reading the switch. Let's remove the plural here. So the read switch, we pass two parameters, the actual pin where we want to read the value of the switch and the mode of the switch. And the mode is important because if the switch is in the uh, normally closed mode, meaning the switch is always on, we received value of one when the switch is not actually pressed by the user. And when the user is pressing the switch, we receive a value of zero. This is why here the normally closed is defined as zero and the normally open is the inverse so for the green switch which is normally open so the switch is off by default we receive a zero when the switch is not pressed by the user and when the user is actually pressing the switch we will receive a value of one so this is why we compare it the value with the mode so we read the switch, the value of the switch. We compare it with the mode of the switch. And if the mode is equal to the value that we read uh, on the pin, actually this means that the switch has been pressed. And to make sure that we just read one, one actual pressing of the switch, we're using a value of 400 milliseconds uh, to avoid all the other readings that are sent by the switch uh, since it's a mechanical device. So this makes sure that we receive just one actual value of a switch that has been pressed by the user. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you. I enjoyed making it. The link to the code is available in the video description. Don't hesitate to leave comments and please subscribe.